Hey, fourth grade friends. Here we are in our second week of distance learning, and I hope you're all doing well. Hopefully, Seesaw has been um, kind to you, and hopefully you're able to get to your assignments and doing what you need to be doing um, to get things completed. If you are needing any support or help with it, um, you can reach out to me if you are needing help. Um, I'm just hoping everyone's been able to get on and been able to access what they need to for their assignments and for their um, work for Seesaw. So hopefully that's all going well. Um, so we are in our second week. This is our school counseling lesson for the second week. Um, missing you all so much. And again, this is not the same as being at school. Um, so just know that we are doing the best we can. If you ever have questions, you certainly can email me. My email is hgysbers at sspps.org. Welcome to do that. I've also had a couple of friends that have been able to send me their completed assignments from last week, um, which is great. And if you do get a chance to do that, you can email me still and you will be getting a Packer Praise um, ticket for that. And we will submit that to the office. So just um, send that my way if you are completed, if you have finished it and it's completed. So today's lesson is called Taking Responsibility for Your Actions. And it's lesson 20. Um, I did skip lesson 19 because that was about playground, sorry, playground concerns. And that is not something, um, obviously, that we are dealing with right now. So I thought that we might put that on hold. Um, if yet, if we are going to be back at school, maybe I will be doing that when we head back to school. But again, this is titled, um, again, Taking Responsibility for Your Actions. Um, so just kind of be thinking about the word responsibility and what that means to you. Um, obviously, a lot of you have had to take lots of responsibility with distance learning. Um, it's a big, big transition um, from being at school. So you've had to take responsibility so much already in the first week, um, being that you've had to um, be responsible for your own learning and when it gets done. Um, unless your parents are right there, this is your accountability for what you need to do and what you need to get done. So responsibility is only going to get more and more as you get older. Um, and it's certainly something that um, has been a big change too, and I'm sure you've noticed um, with the distance learning. So responsibility is definitely um, a very key concept with what you've been dealing with um, within the last week or two. So um, we're gonna start, so we um, don't have a picture, but it's a cartoon. And what's happening is the cat knocked over a vase. And again, it's a cartoon. So just kind of figuring out what, what can you get from that picture? And what happened is the cat didn't want to admit that what he did, he was lying about um, that he was the one that did it. So maybe you can be thinking about a situation at your home where, gosh, you thought it would be easier to lie or you thought it'd be easier to um, just make up what happened um, than what actually actually really did happen. So um, if we were at school, you would have been able to see that cartoon. Um, so the cat's not taking responsibility for its actions. Um, so be thinking of a time when you made a mistake or did something wrong but didn't want to admit it. So I will share one. And of course, if we were at school, we'd be able to share, which I am happy if you guys want to email me um, or comment. If you're feeling like a risk taker, you can do that. Otherwise, certainly email me. Um, a time that you felt like it was hard for you to take um, responsibility for something. You made a mistake and you didn't want to own up to that um, because it was hard at the time. Um, so maybe um, it was something at school or maybe it was at a soccer game. Or maybe um, it was at, you know, um, out on the playground or something like that. So thinking about a time that you made a mistake and it was hard for you to admit it. Um, so taking responsibility for your actions is not always easy. It can feel like a problem. For the past couple of weeks, you've been learning how to use the problem solving steps. And we shared that last week as well. Um, here's the problem solving steps poster. And I'm just going to show you again. So step S is saying the problem without blame. And again, we talked about how that can be very, very difficult. It might seem like it's easy at first, but it's actually harder than what we think. Um, the not blaming the person, thinking of solutions, safe and respectful, exploring consequences, what could happen if, and finally pick the best, pick the best solution, P, making your plan, which we talked about making your plan in our last lesson. So again, those are the problem solving steps. So today you're going to learn how to use the problem solving steps for times 
that when the problem is taking responsibility um, for your actions. You will learn that part of taking responsibility includes apologizing and then offering to make it up or make amends, okay? So sometimes apologizing can be very challenging and hard for kids to do. Um, it is not something that I've had difficulty with. Um, when I've made a mistake, I wanna apologize and make sure that person knows that I did not mean to do what I did. Um, but sometimes people don't have an easy time apologizing because they want they don't want to see as though they were wrong in something. Um, but again, apologizing is a huge um, um, thing to do, is a responsible thing to do um, when we are needing to. So we're going to pretend that we're watching a video. And what happens is that um, Derek did something wrong and he had a problem. Okay? He hurt his friend's feelings. And now his friend is upset with him. So it's something that he said to him that made him feel very, very upset. Um, so he heard his friend's feelings. He realized that he needs to do something to make his friend feel better. He needs to take responsibility for his actions. Okay. So thinking about what the next step would be, and I'm sure you guys know, but I'm going to show you anyways. It's thinking of solutions. Okay. So the T. So again, we know that the problem is he hurt his friend's feelings. So now we're thinking of solutions. Okay, so turn and tell. You can turn and talk to your um, parent or a brother or sister or a stuffed animal, whomever you want at home, um, and just turn and tell them um, what are some solutions being that um, he hurt his friend's feelings and is feeling really bad about it, okay? So he could... Um, <laughs> apologize. Obviously, we talked about that. Okay, apologizing is super important. He could admit what he said was mean. He could explain that he was frustrated by having to stay in from recess and didn't really mean what he said. He could pretend like it never happened. Okay. So he, again, made him feel bad because um, he wanted to make sure that he um, definitely was responsible in apologizing or definitely showing that he cared enough to make sure his friend wasn't feeling hurt. Okay. So then the next step is the E, exploring consequences. So if you can see it here, okay, what could happen if, okay. So for each of these solutions, we need to, we need to ask what could happen. Okay. So as far as, gosh, one of them, as far as apologizing, what could happen? Well, he would feel better and he would feel like he cares about him if he apologized. Um, as far as um, if he admitted he said he, what was mean, he would again feel better too and would feel like he was able um, to continue having a positive relationship with him. Um, Derek could pretend like it never happened. Well, of course, the consequence with that would be is that they would probably not have a trusting relationship and he probably wouldn't want to hang out with them anymore, right? If someone kind of pretended that if you did something mean to someone or said something mean to someone, you probably wouldn't trust them very much and you probably wouldn't want to spend very much time with them. It would definitely be a relationship. So certainly that the consequence with that one would be is that they wouldn't have a strong relationship if any relationship. Um, and finally, as explaining that he was frustrated by having to stay in from recess and didn't really mean what he said, um, certainly that is very good, positive, open communication, and they would both feel um, comfortable with knowing what exactly went on. So that is the E, exploring the consequences. And finally, the P, picking the best solution. Um, so kind of be thinking about what you think the best solution So Derek decided to take responsibility for his actions. He picked a solution that included first admitting that he was wrong. Okay, so that's a big thing to do. And a very um, powerful thing to do. Um, second, he apologized. And third, he made amends by offering to do something nice for Carlos. Okay, so he did actually three things. Okay, so he admitted he was wrong. He apologized. And then he offered to do something nice for Carlos. So is the solution, solution safe? Yep, the solution is safe. Is it respectful? Yes, it's respectful. And um, what do you think will happen? And you guys can be thinking about what do you think will happen being that he was able to do those three things. So it does take a lot of courage to take responsibility for your actions. What feelings do you think Derek could have had before you apologized to him? Do you think he might've felt guilty, maybe anxious, maybe worried, 
maybe kind of feeling unsettled, right? Whenever we feel like, or whenever we need to um, do something that's hard or challenging, we kind of sometimes might have some uneasy feelings. Um, so Derek definitely meant what he said and he was feeling really bad. And you could tell, and of course we don't see the video, but you could tell by his facial features um, just how he was feeling when he apologized with him. So by offering to let Carlos play with his ball, Derek is trying to make amends. Making amends means doing something to make up for what you did wrong. Okay. And thinking about when Carlos apologized, how do you think he felt? Okay. Um, when Enrique apologized to Carlos, how do you think he had felt for him? So Derek needs to understand that maybe Carlos won't want to play with him for a little bit, but it could take time for Carlos's hurt feelings to go away. Keep calm and trying to understand how others might feel is an important part of apologizing. Okay. Um, is there a never a time when you, you would not accept an apology? Okay. So maybe be thinking about that. Maybe if someone did something really, un, you know, something physical that really hurts you, maybe you don't feel um, like that would be as far as in a time to accept an apology, that it really hurt you. Maybe someone lied to you about something that was extremely serious. Um, it's just so be thinking about a time that um, maybe an apology might be a hard thing to accept. Um, so those are um, some things you can be thinking about as well. So, and then finally, I want to leave you with one question and then we're going to get into our worksheet part, but which part of taking responsibility do you think is the most challenging? And I would like you to write that down just right now, if you could, which part of taking responsibility do you think is the most challenging? Okay. So if you could just write that answer down on a piece of paper, that would be awesome. And I wish I could see those answers, but of course I can't. Um, again, you're welcome to email me at any time along with your worksheet if you like. But um, one more time, which part of taking responsibility do you think would be the most challenging for you? Okay. Um, and now we're going to talk about our worksheets that we're going to do. And again, um, we have two different ones. One's you're going to do with a family and one you can do by yourself. This is the first one. Okay. And it says to choose a situation and read it with a partner or you or you could read it um, with yourself. That's okay too. So I'm going to read them to you. And I, like, if you are needing it to be emailed to you, please let me know. So the first one says the borrowed book. You borrowed your friend's favorite book just for the weekend. You were reading it on the bus and you accidentally left it behind. You called lost and found, but it is gone. What do you do? Okay. So that's the borrowed book. So be thinking about um, what you need to do. Um, thinking about the problem solving steps and figuring that out. Okay. So certainly accidents happen, but what would you need to do to make sure that gets back to that person? The next one is called the dessert. Your friend got up from the lunch table and you thought he went outside. He left his dessert behind. And since you thought he was gone, you ate it. When he came back, he wanted to have his dessert, but you had already eaten it. What do you do? Oh boy. So I'll be thinking again about the problem solving steps and what to do in that situation. And finally, one more, the cartoon. You drew a cartoon on your friend's notebook because you thought it would be funny. Your friend did not think it was funny. She is mad. What do you do? Okay. So then there's three parts of taking responsibility that's down on the bottom. Okay. And there's a checklist with it. Um, and they, the three are admitting what you did wrong, making an apology, and offering to make amends. Okay, so those are the three that you're going to be focused on um, when you do this, like I said, either with a family member or stuffed animal or someone that you could do this with. And of course, this is something you can do over the phone or FaceTime with anyone too. Okay, so that's the first activity. And then the second one looks like this. And this is the one, um, too, you can be doing with a family member. So it says this, uh-oh, you accidentally bumped a table while you were walking and talking on the phone and your mom's favorite face fell and broke. Oh no. What do you do? Blame it on your sister? Hide the pieces and tell your mom you have no idea what happened to it. Hey, I hope you want to do those things. So just um, those are the things that you're going to be talking about as far as the vase broke, your mom's favorite vase broke. Okay. And the four different items are, I need to take responsibility for admitting what you did was wrong, what would you say? Make a sincere apology and then offering to make amends. What can you do being that you broke the vase? Okay, so those are two things that you can be doing this one as, long, as far as the broken vase goes. 
And then of course, this one with the three different situations. Um, and again, the three steps are admitting what you did wrong, making a sincere apology and offering to make amends, okay? So just know that this can be any part of your life. It's not just like a school thing, gosh, any part. So whether you're maybe at church activity or a school activity or community activity, whether it be a sport or a theater type thing, or gosh, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, there's times that we are definitely gonna have to own up to what we did was wrong. And I wish I was there to talk with you guys because I feel like the lesson would be that much more powerful. Um, so, and just hearing all your ideas. So feel welcome to email me and let me know a time if you could share, that would be amazing um, that you made a mistake, but you admitted what you did was wrong. And that says a lot about you when you're able to do that. So your character says a lot about you when you're able to do that. I miss you guys. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Again, my email, H-G-Y-S-B-E-R-S -E at sspps.org. Bye. See you later. See you next week.